When I was a little boy, I was scared of the dark. I was scared of the dark because when the lights were switched off, I'd only be able to see blurred lines and crude shadows. It was an incomplete picture. Naturally, what my brain would do was try its very best to fill in the blanks. And so, it turned the blurred lines and crude shadows into scary monsters lurking in my bedroom closet waiting to attack me. Without the external stimuli to keep it occupied, my brain would use what little visual information it had to create its own narrative and come to its own conclusions about the world around it. And as it turns out, dreaming is actually a very similar experience. Dreams are truly fascinating because they show us that our human brains, when disconnected from the environment and from any external stimuli, can still create entire worlds and experiences from within. These worlds are so vivid, real and entirely believable. According to studies, up to 60% of people don't realize they're in a dream until they're awakened and the dream ends. Common wisdom tells us that sleep is the time when we rest our bodies and our minds. However, far from being a restful state, EEG studies that measure electrical activity in the brain indicate that the brain is actually just as electrically active during REM sleep as it is when we're alert and awake. REM sleep, or rapid eye movement sleep, is deep sleep that's characterized by rapid eye movements and complete muscle relaxation known as atonia. It's also the stage of sleep that's most often associated with dreams and dreaming. Interestingly, however, it's not the brain's REM sleep generator that seems to be responsible for creating our dreams, but an area of the brain known as Broadman's Area 40, and it's located just about here. Any damage to or near the small area of the brain ends all dreaming forever, like no more dreams ever again, you're done, it's over for you. No dreams. <laughs> This actually makes a lot of sense, because we know that Broadman's Area 40 remains underdeveloped in children until they're about 7 years old, incidentally, the age when children start having their first ever dreams. According to one study, only around 20% of children under the age of 7 report dreaming when awakened from REM sleep, compared to 80-90% to of adults. And the children under 7 who did have dreams were the ones with the most well-developed Broadman's Area 40. Broadman's Area 40 is responsible for mental imagery, or being able to imagine things without these things being right there in front of you. It's why you're able to spontaneously imagine an apple without me showing you a picture of one. In fact, Broadman's Area 40 and the role it plays in mental imagery is probably the reason why books made for young children tend to have pictures and drawings in them. Before they're 7 years old, children are just unable to imagine things in a narrative or a storyline unless you give them visual aids. It's only after age 7 that we start seeing children's books become a lot more boring with a lot fewer pictures in them and a lot more text. This is also the reason why adults who've gone blind before the age of 7 tend to not have dreams because the areas of the brain that are responsible for the mental imagery that dreaming relies upon had not developed yet at the point that they'd lost their vision. In other words, the brain doesn't have a frame of reference to use, and creating highly visual dreams becomes a no-starter. What this tells us is that while dreams can feel like mind-bending hallucinatory experiences, they're largely an extension of reality and our waking consciousness, meaning that our brains don't just create them from scratch or out of thin air. Broadman's Area 40 relies heavily on the hippocampus, where memories are stored and processed. These memories or residues from our waking experiences provide Broadman's Area 40 with the foundations or templates that allow our brains to extrapolate by imagining and creating new things from those memories. To me, it's a bit like if you were asked to draw a friend from memory. You'd probably get all their main features right, after all, they're your best friend, but there will probably be a lot of fine details that you just wouldn't be able to remember. Drawing from memory is a lot like dreaming in that when you examine the fine details of your dreams, you'll probably find these details lacking or non-existent. Dreams are both incredibly vivid and familiar, and yet, they're also pretty featureless. One way dreaming is different from memory drawing, however, is that we're far more likely to confabulate when we dream or compensate by fabricating imaginary false details in place of the things that we can't remember. 
Scientists think that the reason we are able to do this during sleep and not when we are awake is due to our senses being turned off in sleep. We are therefore unbothered by external stimuli, which leaves more of the brain's processing power available to combine and warp our memories and mental imagery in new and fascinating ways. The inhibitory mechanisms that help keep us sane during our waking hours are also largely turned off during REM sleep, giving our brains the opportunity to take more liberties unburdened by the confines of both logic and reason. Our brains are constantly longing for explanations. They are on a never-ending journey to understand things. And sometimes that means it just has to fill in the blanks to create its own narrative. A lot like what my brain did when I was a scared little boy and my parents insisted on switching off my bedroom lights. My name is Hashim and I'm glad to say that I'm not a scared little boy anymore, even though I do sleep with the lights switched on now. <laughs> I'm also a medical doctor and this is my YouTube channel where I use silly metaphors and personal stories to explain how the brain works. Like and subscribe, but only if you want to.